Um, it's quarter two now, so um, I'll make a start. Um, so welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Magda. I'm uh, from Previous Next, and um, today I'm going to talk about uh, Drupal 8 theming. Um, can I just get a sort of raise of hands? Has anyone actually done any Drupal 8 theming so far? No? Okay. So um, I'm just going to sort of do a few points. Hopefully we'll sort of get you started and familiar. Um, with Drupal 8, so theming. So um, in the overview, I'm going to basically list some of the new features that have been introduced into Drupal 8. Um, if you've gone to Angie's um, presentation, she's actually mentioned um, just a couple of them that I'm uh, going to mention, so apologies for the repeat. Um, and then I'm just going to do a bit of a walkthrough on how to um, set up and create a, a basic um, custom Drupal 8 theme. So then some of the new features. So HTML uh, is now used in all Drupal 8 markup. Um, this will also mean that forms will also take advantage of some of the HTML5 tags like date and tail phone, which is actually uh, quite important for um, mobile devices. Um, also, sorry, uh, responsive, sorry. My slides have gone a bit. Oops. Oops sorry about that. I think my internet's just. Sorry about that, it looks like my slides have just gone a bit um, wonky. Um, so, sorry, as I was saying before, HTML5 has been um, introduced into um, Drupal 8's theming, and the next sort of lot um, I wanted to, to go through is um, the responsive layouts. So all the um, core Drupal themes are now responsive and mobile first. And you can see also the, um, the toolbar has also been giving um, a responsive treatment as well. Um, sorry about that, it just looks like my... There's also been a few front-end technologies that have been introduced into Drupal 8. Um, so things like modernizer, underscore JS, and backbone JS, which is, is used for um, Drupal 8's um, mobile um, experience and um, content authoring as well. Uh, the JS um, performance has been improved. So um, a lot of jQuery has actually been rewritten in JavaScript to improve the performance. Um, also, uh, now, uh, currently in Drupal 7, jQuery loads in all pages, whereas in Drupal 8, you actually have to specify um, which pages you actually want jQuery to load. And also jQuery now loads in the footer um, as opposed to the header section. Um, there's also um, been a few CSS standard introduced, so uh, you may be aware that in Drupal 7, the CSS isn't such so nice and clean at the moment but um, there's been a lot of work put into um, implementing this max and VEM uh, methodology. And I do recommend that you do go and check out this link, which actually specifies um, what these uh, uh, rules are. Also, responsive images um, have been introduced in core as well. Uh, so basically, that's using the responsive image module. 
and that allows you to um, specify um, what image size that you want to output based on the breakpoint. So it's a bit like the picture module, uh, sorry, picture element. And here's just um, an example of how you actually uh, map uh, the image sizes to your media queries. And I'll actually go through it a little bit later on how to uh, set that up. There's also been um, uh, improvement in the accessibility. Um, so greater use of area attributes, specifically in um, the content offering side of things and uh, in the toolbar. Uh, there's also been a couple of JS uh, scripts uh, introduced to improve accessibility as well. Um, there's the uh, Drupal uh, tabbing manager, which um, restrains tabbing to certain elements. So uh, whenever a user is completing a specific task, um, then the keyboard uh, tabbing should be uh, restrained to that specific um, or relevant task that they're completing. And then you can use Drupal.announce, which is the sort of text that you want to be read out by screen readers that um, is applied to the um, restrained tabbing. Uh, there's a new templating engine uh, that's been introduced that replaces um, uh, the current PHP template, um, and that is Twig, um, which is Angie mentioned that Keynote is also um, created by the same people that are, they've created Symfony, which is the um, PHP framework that Drupal 8 is adopting. Um, the template is, is an open source, so it's already out there. Um, it's relatively secure compared to what we have now, which basically allows you to put anything um, into your templates, including um, SQL queries. And um, it's uh, relatively fast, um, although how fast it's in Drupal, that's a different matter. Um, and it's also sort of easy to learn and has very clean syntax, so you don't have to learn PHP anymore. So here's just an example of um, a title being printed. So it's, you can kind of just read basically what it's doing. So it's just checking if, if the title is being found out is there. And if it is, then it prints out that variable. Um, now, debugging is also available in core. Um, at the moment, uh, in Drupal 7, if you want to know uh, where your templates are or what you should call them, you have to enable the Devel Beamer module, which is okay, but um, this is actually quite nice and you don't actually have to install anything. Um, so that actually shows you uh, debugging information um, in your HTML source. So, for example, this is for um, uh, the page template. So this shows you sort of the... Um, the file name suggestions. This is the one that has the cross next to it. It shows which one is currently used. Um, and this shows the location of the template. Um, so to enable it, it's very simple. You just go into uh, site's default services YAML file. Um, and then you just change a small configuration. So you, you, type, you make the debug true instead of false, which is set up as default. And if you're using Firebug, you just have to um, make sure that um, you're allowing comments to show. And you can also use the dump variable, um, which shows all the variables that are present in your template. Um, you can, for sort of a nicer look, there is a, um, you can use Kint, uh, which is actually part of the Devel module in Drupal, Drupal 8, so you do actually have to download and enable it, but it may end up being in core. Um, there's a new core base theme um, called Classy, and it's actually um, going to be the base theme for all the core uh, themes in Drupal 8, like Bardic and 7. Um, and basically the reason this new um, theme has been introduced was because there was a sense that came that they decided to have uh, in DrupalCon Austin where they, from a survey, discovered that um, sort of a third of front-end developers didn't want any kind of CSS uh, in Drupal, whereas two-thirds did want some CSS. So 
um, what they're doing is they're trying to move all the classes from template files and functions and move them into the core templates, and then they'll move the, all the core uh, template files into Classy, and core will just sort of end up with markup and, and, not, and not much CSS at all, only if it needs it for functionality. So it, it will, so Classy does contain sort of minimum clean CSS classes sort of just to get you started. And if you do um, want to use um, or have start off with Drupal's classes, you should set up um, Classy as your base theme. So creating a custom Drupal theme. So um, there's sort of two main approaches, as I mentioned before. Um, one is if you, if you want to have um, Drupal classes, then you basically um, create a sub-theme using Classy as your base theme. Um, and then if you want to create a custom theme with no classes, then you don't use Classy as your base theme. So the file structure uh, in Diet has changed slightly. So your core themes are now in core slash themes. And any custom and contrib um, themes are in the themes directory, which currently in Drupal 7, that's where your core are. So it's a, a little bit different. Um, it is good practice. <laughs> it is uh, good practice, however, to um, to move uh, to have like your contrib file, uh, themes in a cod contrib um, subfolder and your custom in the your custom folder just to keep it clean. Um, so here's just sort of a breakdown of the file structure uh, um, in Drupal 8. So some of the some of them will be familiar to you, like your CSS, your images, and um, and your JS. But there's a few files that are a little bit different. So I'll just go through them. Um, so basically, to get started, um, you create your theme folder um, in theme slash custom, and then you create your uh, .info .yaml file, which is basically the replacement of um, .info file in Drupal 7. Um, so what do you specify in the .info file, .yaml file? This is basically your metadata, which is a little bit similar to um, Drupal 7. Um, so you have your your name, which is just a um, human readable name that appears in your um, list of installed themes. Um, then the type, so that's the extension type. So that's you have to specify that in Drupal 8 now. So that's either a theme or a module or a profile. So in this case, it's going to be a theme. Um, then a description, uh, which again is just going to show up in your um, uh, list of installed themes, and what uh, package it is. So that's basically if you want to group your uh, themes under a certain type, and then it's um, in what core, um, which in this case is going to be Drupal 8. Um, and if you want to use Classy as your base theme, all you basically do is just add base theme and classy, and that's it. Um, then you basically have uh, your regions. So it's like in uh, Drupal 7. So that's the machine name. So that's what you sort of print out in your uh, template files. And that's the human readable name, which uh, appears in the list of um, uh, sort of blocks, uh, configuration blocks, where you can assign content to. Um, then your CSS and JS files. Now, this has um, changed a little bit in Drupal 8, so I'll just go through it. So in, in Drupal 7, um, currently, you list um, your JS and CSS files in a .info file, or if you want to uh, add them uh, conditionally, then you use the uh, theme hook preprocess, um, and you use the Drupal.add class or Drupal 8 JS. Um, However, in uh, Drupal 8, um, basically you add your JS and uh, CSS files through what they call asset libraries. Um, and each asset is, uh, contains a combination of CSS and or JS files. And then each asset then is attached to either a page, to all pages, or to a specific um, uh, sub pages that you want. 
Um, and libraries need to explicitly declare their own dependencies. So if you've um, got using jQuery, then you need to actually specify that you need a dependency of the jQuery library. Um, so how do you define an asset library? So that asset libraries actually go into your .libraries.yema file. And the way you specify is that, so um, here's an example. So I've got two asset libraries. So one's called global styling, and that just includes some um, CSS. And then you've got uh, another asset, w uh, which is called slider, and that includes CSS for the slider and JS. And you notice you also have, uh, and you have to declare dependencies. So you've got to um, load the jQuery library because you're using uh, jQuery in this case. Um, so then once you've uh, defined your uh, asset libraries in the dot libraries file, then you basically attach them. So if you want to attach them to all pages, you just list them in the dot info dot yammer file. So um, that's that one there. So that's so it's basically the, the theme's machine name and then um, the name of the asset that um, I had specified before. So that's the name. And then if you want to uh, attach it to uh, a different page or uh, sub pages, um, you basically um, implement it for the theme preprocess hook. So uh, you use the attached library um, array and then you just say the same thing. You just specify which um, uh, asset library that you want. Uh, that, um, w w yeah, which uh, asset library you want to attach to the page. So uh, in this case, I've said that if it's uh, to only load that slider uh, library, if it's only on the front page. Um, so you can also um, sort of remove and override CSS in the .yammer file as well. Um, so that's just really simple syntax uh, to remove, and this is just um, to override. Um, so templates in Drupal 8, so uh, all your preprocess and logic um, are now in uh, dot .theme uh, file, so that replaces the template.php in uh, Drupal 7. Um, to override template files, it's the same as you do now, so basically just copy the twig file to your um, template folder, and then you use so the debug for location and um, and hook names. And this just is an example of just some twig syntax. So I showed that one before, so that's um, pretty straightforward. Um, this one is uh, if you want to. Uh, print out the footer region, so uh, that's just page dot and whatever the name um, of or the machine name of the region that you specified, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, and you can also use this one um, uses a the good twig, twig filters, so this one's using the translate um, filter, which basically um, uses the translate function. Uh, so there's actually quite a few of them available in Twig if you want to um, amend the variables that you're printing out. And this is a place to go if you want uh, more information on Twig. Uh, so uh, responsive images. So as I mentioned before, this is new um, in Drupal 8 core. Um, so basically it's a combination of the break module and responsive module that's now available and it allows to map image size to media query so um, as I mentioned before you can output what size of image that you want based on the media query so to configure that first you have to define your media queries and that's done in your dot breakpoints dot yema file which is located in the uh, themes root directory. And 
and so here's an example of one. Um, so here's the media query group, so because you can actually specify different groups, like you might have um, one for like a specific uh, type of image. Um, then you have uh, the label, which that's just what the label appears in the um, UI interface. Then you define your actual, what your media query is, so um, at what point do you want that um, image to appear. And then this is just the weight, so that's just the position that um, that uh, media query shows up um, in the UI. And then there's also retina support as well. Uh, so once you've done that, you then uh, create the image styles, so that's the corresponding sizes, um, and then you map the image styles to the media queries. And you do that in the um, admin config media responsive image um, setting. So once you've done that, so it just, this is the configuration. So then you just basically, as I showed before, you just map um, what size of the image you want to show at which breakpoint. And once you've done that, you have to set uh, the format to responsive image uh, in the field. So you'll see you now have two. You can select either image or responsive image. So you have to select the responsive image. And then once that's done, then what you just need to do is go into the image um, field and uh, select uh, responsive image mapping and then you select which profile that you created for the uh, responsive image. And um, once that, that's it. Thank you. I finished a little bit early then realised is there any questions? Yep. When you're saying you have to uh, like the, you, you list out the In the libraries. Yeah. Yes. Modules like contra modules and core modules, where are they going to store their templates? Are they going to be similar sort of thing? Uh that's a good question. I I think it's I'm not quite actually sure about that one. I haven't um I presume it's this still gonna be in in the modules. But I'm not quite sure about that, sorry. Yeah. So this is kind of one that I've sort of been playing with a little bit. Um, yep. Um, yes. Uh, no, that one isn't, um, but I've got one that's kind of, that does. Um. This one. So I thought I had one because I did it for the demo. I think it might. 
might be this one. It's not. No, I'm sorry. I did have one because I, but I must have. Um. Uh. No, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't. Yes, Donna. Yeah, it will actually have to be in the theme. So it will, yeah, so it will have to be done um, in the dot break points. But once they're set up, then you can do it. Um, to address the response of the question at the end there, um, I, I don't know what they do right this second in the AAA core. Um, the last time I looked at it, which was, I think, on um, the internet, um, uh, the maintainers were actively Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as far as my way up. D Donna? I think it was, compared to Drupal 7, I think it was pretty straightforward. Do you think it's easier in Drupal 8? I think so, yeah. What's the advice you learned how to Maybe on the Have you gone around with maybe admin things in Drupal 8? Uh, sorry, the... Have you gone around with maybe an admin thing in Drupal 8? No. I don't know because we haven't, you mean for Drupal 8? Yeah, that's something I, we haven't really thought about, have we, John, um, at this point, so I can't, I can't comment until you start sort of thinking about it because <laughs> I don't want to sort of say anything that later I'll say, well, yeah, we haven't done it, so. Yeah, that's the Kent one, yeah. Uh, you just, you just um, put uh, Kent, print out the Kent variable in the template file. Uh, yeah.
So, sorry, yes, so it's in. Um, so, here's the demo, so it would be in. So, yep. <laughs> and for the other one that's not as nice, you just use dump instead, but that it's not. I think that's actually the name um, given to the um, library. library, yeah. And it's, I guess it's like named after someone, but they spelled it incorrectly. So it's meant to be like Nell or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I haven't tried it, but I think yeah, you should you should be you should be able to. Sorry, John. So, so what did you? Sorry, is that? No, but it is something that you do it once you've installed Devel, then you've got an option then to enable it. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Will it produce an error? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, no, I actually haven't tried that. Um, hope, yeah. Uh, I'm. Yeah, I haven't actually tried that. Um, yeah. Just like the Devel module, because it's part of that. Um, John, sorry, what did you want to see? Oh, okay. Because I just did a training for some new people at Drupal 17, and I was basically apologizing. I have no idea how to explain to you how to find the HTML that this thing comes from. Yep. Looking at the theme, if it's there, excellent. Then go look at your base theme, and then go weak. Yeah, so I don't know why this is not working. I'll just try it in Chrome. So you just, um, oops, I don't know why. But yeah, you just uh, should just inspect element and it shows it to you. But, but there's some, something you have to turn on to do that, right? There's some configuration. Is it, is it just a debug flag? There's a debug flag. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so I don't know why it's just not a mask on weird. But yeah, it's just a debug. So once you've done that, um, then it just displays in the should just go um, if I just go view source it should just display here yeah and so and that's and all we need to do is just enable the debug yep Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, that, that's sort of part of the BEM convention uh, methodology. So um, if it's if you're writing a component and if it's uh, like a subcomponent, you use underscore. Um, but if it's an extension or a modifier, you just use uh, dash. So um, yeah, if you just read up on BAM or the uh, link that I sent uh, that I had before on the CSS coding standards, that's basically where that is. So it's just basically a, a, a sort of a, a CSS um, methodology on how to sort of name your CSS. Oh, you mean like the weight? The weight, but also like the scope. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can actually do that in a, um, in your um dot yam uh, info dot yam files. You can uh, specify. It. Oh no, actually, yeah, you can. I think specify it there as well. Yep, anything more questions? Yep. Uh, I guess it depends on on whether it, the image size is going to is like the image sizes um, are got, the size of your images are going to change the same as your breakpoints that are outlined in your SAS because something you might want um, like your images uh, to change um, and your media queries that are different to what the ones in the SAS. So if it's if it's the same, then yeah. But if it's not, you might. And it, no, it just really depends on, on the image and the size, if that, if that makes sense. I somebody could write like a little HTML that like, exports the simple breakpoints into a SAS file that they could then import that would be helpful. Uh, any more questions? Yes? Uh, it's whenever things look bad, that's when you kind of <laughs> define your breakpoint. So when you start seeing that something isn't looking correctly at a certain breakpoint, that's when it's um, to introduce a new breakpoint. No, no, not that I can. Yeah. So you've got to kind of think of device free more just the size. So forget that whether it's going to be, you know, mobile, whatever that means, or tablet, because that's going to change. It's just whatever size, just it should like look good on all sizes, pretty much. <laughs> yes? Is there an easy way of removing um, all the JavaScript files and CSS files out of the module design? Like, there's a lot there, I know, there's a tool on module, but, yeah, we're going to do background stuff. Can we get it um, Well, you can remove the CSS files. Um, I'm not so sure about um i mean this is basically because it's because this is basically because you're logged in at the moment so that's why you're seeing all this stuff because you need it for the toolbar and con configuration but um i'm not sure if how that's going to if you start removing them how, whether that's going to start breaking other things any more questions Okay, I think that's nearly break. Thank you. Yeah.